So Alabama's dancing. Do we like our dance partners is the question. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. And want to thank everybody for joining me on the live broadcast uh, that I did just a minute ago, as far as you're concerned, or it was last night or whatever. Uh, doesn't matter, but I did it, and I had a lot of people joined, and I appreciate everybody doing that. Uh, Jimmy, the Alabama Crimson Tide will take on Charlotte College of Charleston in Spokane, Washington, just like everybody thought. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, just all you got to do is make a quick trip right up the road to Spokane to see Alabama take on um, to take on College of Charleston. And by the way, if I'm not mistaken, and again, we just watched the bracket. I know I'm putting this out on Monday. We just watched the bracket. Auburn plays in Spokane. Correct. So strange that Alabama and Auburn will be in the same locale. Of course, not even in the same bracket. Uh, Alabama and Auburn would not meet in this tournament where they're both being Spokane, but Alabama and Auburn cannot meet until a final four. Uh, that's, that would be very unlikely uh, for both if you ask me, but uh, uh, I do think that uh, it's very coincidental and uh, almost kind of funny that uh, Alabama and Auburn both end up in the NCAA tournament in Spokane, Washington, about as far away from the state of Alabama as possible. Uh, you know, I, I think Alabama's got a little tougher. I mean, I know I'm a little biased. I think Alabama's got a little tougher matchup, you know, than, than with college of Charleston, who's, a very hot team. They've won 12 in a row. Someone on the CBS show, as soon as the the, the, the brackets were announced, said Alabama would lose uh, to Charleston. Uh, they're sort of one of these uh, Cinderella-type teams that, that I think a lot of uh, national commentators will pick. I doubt anyone uh, – I doubt there'll be too many people picking Yale to beat Auburn. I, I think they have the slightly easier matchup in Spokane, slightly. Uh, but then you move to round two, and it, it gets tougher. But that's the thing about the NCAA tournament, Luke. It's so funny. You always wait to see who you draw, right? Like, like you're going to end up drawing uh, Missouri. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, we drew Missouri. They're a win 18. No, everybody you might potentially draw is good. They're all good. Unless you get like a 16 or maybe some 15s. Anyone higher than that is dangerous in this tournament, including College of Charleston. Yeah. And, you know, here's the question, Alabama fans. When you're talking about 14, 13, and, and by the way, UAB also going to Spokane. So Alabama, UAB, and Auburn all going to Spokane. I mean, that's kind of nutty. I mean, and, you know, since they developed this pod system, you'd think they'd fix some of that because, by the way, Charleston has to go that far. And Alabama ends up playing a St. Mary's team that's going to be kind of close to home. That's kind of BS considering St. Mary's is lower seed. But let me ask the, let me ask this question. Here's a question that I'm not sure Aristotle – wouldn't ponder over for weeks. If you're Alabama, would you rather play Charleston, who we all agree, I think, is the tougher 13 seed versus, say, who Auburn plays, and play St. Mary's, who I think is the tougher five seed over San Diego State, would you rather play what Alabama has or play uh, what Auburn has, play an easier first game, but potentially match up with either one, the team that beat you last year in San Diego State, or two, UA freaking B, who Alabama has avoided at all costs. I know some people don't like that, but they do. They avoid them, and I'm all for avoiding them. I don't think Alabama needs to throw UAB a bone for any reason, so I'm fine avoiding them. I wouldn't care if they played. I'd be fine if they played. But I'm saying I also understand Alabama saying this doesn't help us. So uh, which one would you rather have, Jimmy? You know, I don't really take the UAB thing too much into consideration because I think UAB is likely to lose and not sure. even get to that game. Um, I'm looking at would I rather play St. Mary's or play Gonzaga? To me, they're they're almost virtually identical. Uh, I'm sure they did play during the season, and of course, I don't have it in front of me. I, I don't know. I think St. Mary's and Gonzaga. Times, played, I think. It, it le and I'm not sure uh, who won. I, I, off the top of my head, Gonzaga may have won two of the three. I think uh, it was the other way around. The other way around? Okay. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. But I, I think St. Mary's and Gonzaga are, in so many ways, the same team. Uh, and and they're, they're more talented 
than people from the South think. I mean, they're not just good basketball with high IQ guys and great coaches. These are talented pro type players on uh, on both teams. And, and I think that St. Mary's matchup for Alabama is be difficult. I guess if I had to pick one or the other, I'd just soon go with what Alabama drew. Uh, I, I think I think it's fair. I do not think in any way Alabama got screwed here by the committee. I think if anything, Auburn may have uh, in the sense that Auburn won the SEC tournament and didn't really feel like they were rewarded. Uh, but I think Alabama and Auburn have similar paths to the Sweet 16 in terms of the degree of difficulty, similar paths. Uh, Alabama may be a slightly tougher first game than Auburn. Auburn arguably a slightly tougher second game than Alabama. But uh, – right. I don't know. I haven't filled out my brackets yet. I'm sure you haven't either. Uh, well, I mean, they I'm not sure where I'm going to have Alabama. Uh, I'm going to be realistic and not homer out. I mean, I'm going to realistically pick Alabama. And I, I may have them losing in round two. I, I do think they'll beat College of Charleston, but, you know, that, that, that it's a pretty tough game. Again, they've won 12 games in a row. That's a hot team. I'm going to say this. I think Auburn is a better team than Alabama, at least especially right now. But I think Auburn is hurt a little bit and Alabama rewarded a little bit for their non-conference schedule. I think that's what it boils down to. I mean, Auburn and Alabama tied in the SEC standings. They they each won on each other's home floor. And But Alabama clearly played a tougher schedule. I mean, it's not even close. I do think Auburn is certainly playing a lot better. Obviously, they just won the SEC tournament. I, I know it's locked on Bama. I'm just saying that's what I think. So – I, I think the four seed for both of them is about right. I probably would have Alabama a five if I were doing this. But I think the committee wants to send a message. Please schedule difficult games. Even if you lose them and, and even if you get blown out in some of them, we will appreciate the effort. And I think that's important because you look at somebody like an Ole Miss. If Ole Miss had gotten in the tournament, which obviously they weren't even very close, it would have been kind of criminal because they played a sack full of dented soup cans um, the whole year. So, uh, Jimmy, we're going to keep talking about this bracket a little bit more and the rest of the SEC here in just one second. But, of course, right now I want to talk about Nissan. We really do appreciate Nissan and their being with us here on Locked on Bama. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. This seed is... This top seeded team, and they are a top seeded team now, is as hardcore as it gets out there. So no wonder they're expected to land the t- one of the top seeds in the tournament, and they got one. And I'm telling you, this is their first season in the Big 12, and they just performed admirably, just like a Nissan Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue Pathfinder or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. The way you go see these is you go to shop NissanUSA.com. That's NissanUSA.com. Com. Now I want to tell you about Fire TV. Fire! Love me some Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's an opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. It's awesome. You can catch March Madness, NBA, MLB, all this stuff on Fire TV. Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV is where you want to go. Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Go check them out. So Alabama um, plays Charleston, and and I've looked at Charleston here. It's a Friday uh, game, correct? It's a Friday Friday game. game. Hey, again, I I think this is great for Alabama. Even – just this little bit of extra rest is awesome. Especially when awesome. you're flying all the way across the country. Let's exactly. get out there a little early and rest out there and get a little acclimated to the time. And uh, I, I would hope, we'll, we'll see, I, I would urge Alabama to leave early. and uh, Or let's all just go to Birmingham and fly together. Alabama, Auburn, and UAB on one Delta flight out of Birmingham, a charter flight out of Birmingham. With Alabama, UAB, and Auburn, just put them all on one plane and I, I don't think that's 
I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, again, I do like the extra day of rest for Alabama. I think it's crucially needed. One more day of practice, one more day of rest, uh, particularly with the lineup getting back together after the injuries to Wrightsell and Griffin, uh, getting them more acclimated and getting acclimated to that time difference. Spokane is – it's not just the state of Washington. I mean, it's it's it's, it's an outpost a little bit. Uh, they'll have to get acclimated because, you know, St. College Charleston, too, coming cross country – Obviously, St. Mary's is a West Coast team. A uh, little bit of an advantage for them playing closer to home. I know I'm muted. muted. I know I'm muted. I know you fixed, it, you fixed it before the sentence was out, so that, I don't even think that should count against you as a mute. The reason I was muted is because my dead gum yappy dog is in the background barking at every car that <laughs> passes by here, and for whatever reason, I guess it's the door dashing hour. Um, but anyway. Um, you know, one thing Auburn, I hear the Auburn fans are unhappy about their going to Washington. I've, I've, I've heard there's a outcry on the Auburn boards already that they're generally unhappy with their treatment. You know, I've learned that, frankly, Auburn fans are generally unhappy with their treatment always and forever. It doesn't matter what happens. They always think they're undersold. But I mean, that's that's part of their beauty. Right. That's why they always play so hard, typically. So, um, you know. Barrett Salee did tweet out uh, Auburn should be a two seed. And uh, a couple of people tweeted back at him. Um, Auburn's got three quad one seasons all win. I mean, all year. Three quad one wins. I mean, that, you know, okay. I, I don't know how many Bama has. So I'm not trying to get involved in that, but I don't think they, either one of them should be a two seed. Now, right. our good friend Hunter Johnson, who uh, is a friend of the program, he would probably say if Alabama were to fly out to Spokane, Washington with Auburn, that Bruce Pearl would need a seatbelt extender. But that's just a joke Hunter Johnson would make. Don't be mad, mad at me. That's what Hunter Johnson would say. <laughs> I what wouldn't say that. I would say say what he did say, but we didn't say that. I, almost, I don't think he did say it yet, but he will say it once he hears that I said he said it. Um, <laughs> but I'll say this, by the way, just a little fact. And now that I'm getting a little older, I, when I look at Bruce Pearl and I always hear people say, you know, your coach is fat, Bruce Pearl's fat. I'm like, he doesn't look that fat. He looks about my size in terms of gut girth. <laughs> and I don't like people calling him fat because it makes me fat. So don't call him fat anymore. Okay. Uh, anyway, I was just giving you a Hunter Johnson joke. So what about the rest of the SEC, uh, yeah. Jimmy? I really, I like the way that this shaped out for the league, frankly. I mean, I think, uh, South Carolina, uh, they, they've got a good matchup. I think they play Oregon, and I, I feel good about South Carolina winning that. Mississippi State, Michigan State is a great game. It's it a is. great game. Two hardcore teams going at it. And if I'm Michigan State, I'm worried because I'm telling you, Mississippi State's playing well. Um, They've got it together. Shoot, if I'm North Carolina, I'm worried because you either play a team that is very NCAA experienced, the most NCAA experienced in terms of you know the street current streak or you play a Mississippi State squad that has got their act together. So uh yeah North Carolina's got got their own set of problems. Uh Texas AM, I feel good about their beating Nebraska and moving on to play um Houston. Now I think their their fun stops there. Uh Florida at a seven seed I thought was interesting. I, I wonder because I feel like they should have been higher. I feel like they should have been a six, but I wonder if the injury yeah. to their player factored in. That's a great, great point. You know, I didn't – I mean, I knew the injury, but, yeah, yeah, I agree. When it was announced that Florida was a seven, I was stunned. I thought they would be a five or a six. That's a great point you make about their center, who I think uh, fractured his leg uh, in the opening minutes of the SEC tournament championship today. And the committee may have taken that into account, that Florida's going to be missing a player. This is my take on the SEC going into the tournament. I, I think the eight SEC teams – this is what I'm expecting, Luke. I'm expecting a ton of success in opening games. I, I like the SEC to do really well in round one, and then in round two, here comes the losing. In terms of SEC teams making a run in this tournament as far as, let's say, the Elite Eight, uh, I like Tennessee and I like Kentucky. Uh, I, I don't know that any SEC team other than those two will make it uh, any further than, than the Sweet 16. Uh, but generally, I see a lot of wins for the SEC, but the losing starts in round two. Uh, but I can see Tennessee and Kentucky making a pretty good run. In my opinion, those are the two best teams in this league, the two most talented teams, and the two teams built 
for this NCAA tournament. Uh, several teams could do well because it is a tough league. And I think the league toughens you up. And SEC teams are well suited for this tournament because the SEC season has has sort of, I mean, it, it, it toughens you up for this sort of thing. Uh, but overall, I'm going to say most of the eight SEC teams will be gone after round two uh, with maybe Tennessee, Kentucky, and one other team left in the Sweet 16. I'm going to say this. I have not filled out my bracket yet. I don't know that I that I that there's an SEC game that I, I, I think I'm going to pick uh, the other squad. I, I think I'm going to pick the SEC to win all their first-round games. That is dangerous and probably stupid, but I'm telling you I like the SEC's matchups. Yeah. And, and there's only one, right, where the SEC is the lower seed, and that's AM and uh, Nebraska. Nebraska. That might be right. Now, I like AM to win that game. I think you're exactly, I mean, I, I think the SEC could easily win all eight of those games. I'm going to say they're going to win seven. Someone yeah. will lose. You know, maybe Let's hope it's State. not us. Maybe, maybe Alabama. I mean, I think people are going to be surprised, Luke, today, which is Monday, as people are listening to this, Monday and Tuesday, as Fans out there filling in their own brackets and they're watching these shows on TV and they're listening to podcasts and they're reading on it and they're reading predictions. I think Alabama fans might be surprised how many experts pick uh, College of Charleston to beat Alabama. Some of that's on Alabama not playing great down the stretch, but some of it is on College of Charleston playing great down the stretch. And, and, and that's what's happening in Spokane, a, a pretty hot Charleston team against an Alabama team that limped down the stretch a little bit. I, I'm just going to point to and pick an Alabama to win that game, Luke. Alabama has only lost to a team like Charleston. And by a team like Charleston, what I mean is a team at their level or, or, or is slightly higher. Alabama's only lost to, I think, two teams, Luke. South Alabama and, and – uh Whoever Bruce Pearl was coaching that time, was it? No, no. What I mean is this season. Oh, this season. Okay. Alabama has only lost two games to teams that are not in this tournament. I think that's true. I think they only lost to – Who are they? Clemson, Clemson and Ohio State. Clemson's in the tournament. Clemson's in. Okay. So, Alabama only lost to Ohio State, who's not right. in the tournament. Right. Because And they beat Oregon, who was in it. Um, They beat I – mean, yeah, you're right. Clemson is the only seed lower than seven that Alabama lost to. So I think that's correct. I'm just saying a loss. Well, Clemson's a six. They are? Okay. There you <laughs> go. You're so off on Clemson. I, know. Well, I, I, I don't have the brackets in front of me. <laughs> I'm just saying my whole point, which is stand, which stands correct, is Alabama just hasn't lost to bad teams. They've yeah. only lost to good teams. The law a loss to College of Charleston would be unprecedented over the course of the whole season. Sands maybe the Ohio State loss way back in November to, to the one yeah. team that they lost to that's not in this tournament. And again, as Luke pointed out, so so the lowest seeded team we lost to is Florida, and they're a seven, and they're really only a seven because they got docked because their center got hurt. Uh I'm just, Alabama only loses to really good teams. That's a great sign for the first game. It's not a great sign for the second game because you have lost to teams like St. Mary's all year long. I mean, yeah. so that's where I'm going to go and, and be honest and say, I don't know that Alabama's good enough to beat St. Mary's. I, I don't know that they're good enough, but I think that they a loss to, to Charleston would be unprecedented based on how this team has performed all season long against like teams. All right, Jimmy, I'm going to tell everybody about LinkedIn. Then we're going to work in a little football talk. Ah, you know you love LinkedIn. We do. They've been a great sponsor for a long time. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board, y'all. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses don't are wearing so many hats, they don't have time to deal with 
looking for other people or, or dealing with the resources, all that stuff. LinkedIn helps you out. Post a job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they apply. So, Ben, uh, Jimmy, just because we always do it, um, we're going to work in a little football talk because everybody loves football still. And um, Juju Lewis coming back to Alabama. I talked about it uh, yesterday on the live show that I did. Uh, feeling sort of much better about Juju Lewis. Now, they Alabama did lose uh, Zaki uh, Hilton, right? That's Am I saying that right? Yeah, the uh, very young center prospect. Who is the center for Juju Lewis, correct? Yeah, yeah. But um, they did lose his commitment, but he's, he's young. I mean, it's, yeah. we, he's the 2026 guy, so let's just hold off on worrying about that. Right. And, uh, yeah, to, to say that there's time to replace him, if he even needs to be replaced. I mean, this is a kid that will come to camp at Alabama this summer, and there will be a new relationship with the new staff, I have no doubt. I'm, I'm not worried at all about him being such a young prospect. I am more focused on Juju Lewis being a, such a significant recruit for Alabama, probably amongst the top of the priority list uh, in terms of overall players Alabama would like to sign in the 25 class. Juju Lewis would be maybe at the very top of that list. He clearly – likes Alabama. That dude tears up the roads between Carrollton, Georgia, and Tuscaloosa. He has been there multiple times. As Luke and I have said, he's committed to USC. Uh, that commitment feels extremely shaky as he continues to visit multiple other places. Uh, he's, he's, he's been to Alabama a lot more times he's been to L.A., uh, but we'll see. I do think NIL is a major factor, uh, as it is with just about every five-star quarterback. NIL is going to be a big part of their recruitment. Uh, so we'll see how that factors in for Alabama. Being a little more aggressive, by the way, NL wise under the new staff than the old staff. But uh, man, landing Juju Lewis would be a very big deal. Arguably, the best quarterback in in the twenty twenty five class, even though he's a reclassified kid. Yeah, I would certainly love to have it. I mean, like just having him around the program more and trying to get him acclimated. I mean, that would just be so crucial to get him on board at some point. Again, nobody can predict it, and he is committed to Southern Cal. That should be noted. But um, it, it feels like Alabama's making moves here, Jimmy. He really does. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, he, he's – he's all you have to do – I judge – like we said about Ryan Williams the whole last – judge the kid by what he's doing and listen to his words in the interviews – and don't be just so conspiracy minded about everything. Where wh judge them by their actions and what they're saying. And if you judge Juju Lewis by his actions and what he says, Alabama is clearly on the very, very, very short list for him. And it is highly realistic that that kid could end up uh, decommitting from Southern Cal and choosing Alabama. Uh, we're not predicting that to happen at BOL just yet, uh, but that is a recruitment to monitor. Uh, and, and could happen, but it's going to be tough. Uh, I would also watch, I say this every time, uh, I'd watch Georgia with uh, Juju Lewis too. It's the in-state school. They like him. He likes Georgia. Uh, that could make a lot of sense, but he's tight with teammate, former teammate Caleb Odom, who's now already in Tuscaloosa and uh, and, and playing wide receiver. So uh, keep your eye on Juju Lewis. Don't, don't rule it out. Then there was Grayson Littleton uh, on three uh, – Top 250, number 218 guy, um, Grayson Littleton from California, or excuse me, from Tampa. He uh, visited Alabama and seemed to have a great time. The number 17 quarterback in the updated 2024 uh, on 300, on 300, I guess that's how y'all say it. So, 300. Uh, yep. really good player. And uh, he had a great time at Alabama, it seems like. You still with me, Jimmy? Did I lose you? Jimmy, did you die? Yeah, okay. Uh, just for one. For one. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, okay. You know, I think Littleton is just, uh, you know, that that's a, a, a maybe, you know, right now. Right now, they're really what they're working on is board priority, getting kids to camp. So many of the offers are really, we like you. We want to recruit you. We're going to talk to you every week, but we really need to see you in camp. Uh, this staff, a lot like the Saban staff, is going to be pretty insistent on the camp experience for the vast majority of kids. But I would say to everyone, if you want to know how much this new staff likes a kid, if they will take you before you've actually come to camp this summer, 
you you are just as a list as it gets with these guys because they are pretty adamant about about coming to camp. So if they take you prior to June, uh, that means you're you're at the very top of their list. And and Alabama's working on that's all it's, it's all under development, right? And then that list will get really shaken up in what we call the May evaluation period, which means right when spring practice is over, the coaches hit the road, they're gone for 30 days. They do a ton of in-person evaluations at these high school spring practices, which start after the college's spring practices. So that'll produce a shakeup too in terms of the board and priorities. All right, that's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.